it is pretty clear why things like pornography can have a negative impact on our real-life romantic and sexual interactions. Not only is it easy to find and watch, but it can also be really intense. This is something that people are talking about a lot right now, especially because of how it affects our brains. Now, it is important to know that this discussion is not about whether you personally like or dislike pornography. It is more about making choices based on your own values and considering things like your age and other factors. When we do things that give us a big dose of a chemical called dopamine, which makes us feel good, it can be harder to feel that same level of happiness or pleasure in the future. Some people actually become addicted to pornography because it gives them a huge dopamine rush, and this can make it really tough for them to have satisfying relationships in the real world. Most people don't go to extremes and don't experience major drops in their dopamine levels, but some individuals do get addicted and struggle to find happiness or pleasure outside of pornography. We call this addiction, and it is a real concern for those people. When someone actively seeks out drugs or engages in activities that causes their brain to release a lot of dopamine, they might notice that afterward their baseline level of dopamine drops. This happens because the brain uses up its stored dopamine during those intense moments. As a result, people often feel a sense of emptiness or sadness. Unfortunately, many individuals mistakenly believe that by repeating the same activity or taking more of the substance, they can bring their dopamine levels back up and experience that exhilarating high again. Instead of reaching that desired peak, their baseline dopamine levels actually decrease even more over time. This means that with each repetition, they deplete their dopamine reserves even further. It becomes a vicious cycle where people need more and more of the activity or substance to feel any pleasure at all. This phenomenon is commonly observed in cases of addiction, where individuals find that they derive less and less pleasure from the things they used to enjoy. It is like chasing a fading feeling that they can never quite catch. Interestingly, this pattern can also be seen in the context of video games. At first, people may have a lot of fun and excitement playing a game they love. However, as they continue to play, two common outcomes tend to occur, sometimes even at the same time. Let's talk about addiction in a simpler way. Addiction happens when someone's pleasure sources become limited over time. They start to rely on one particular thing to feel excited and get a release of dopamine, which is a feel-good chemical in the brain. As a result, they lose interest in other activities that used to bring them joy, like learning, relationships, and overall well-being. This narrowing of interest gradually makes their life less enjoyable. Eventually, even the activity that initially gave them a dopamine boost doesn't work as well, and their mood declines a lot. This can lead to a serious depression, and sadly, some people even think about or attempt suicide. Imagine someone who does well at work during the week, exercises regularly, and enjoys socializing with alcohol on the weekends. Although they only drink alcohol one or two nights a week, they might start seeking pleasure by eating indulgent food in the middle of the week. It is important to note that everyone needs to eat and find pleasure in food, including myself. If this person keeps turning to foods that give them a big dopamine release every time, it becomes clear that they are seeking pleasure in a pattern. Also, this work hard, play hard type of person might engage in other activities that also stimulate dopamine release, like swimming a few miles in the ocean during the week or going dancing on the weekend. At first glance, this lifestyle may seem balanced and enjoyable. But the problem is that dopamine is not only triggered by one specific activity, it is released by all of these activities. Whenever a person experiences a surge of dopamine from any of these sources, the brain strengthens the connection between behavior and pleasure. It creates strong pathways in the brain, reinforcing the desire for more of those activities. Dopamine acts as a chemical messenger in our brains, influencing our behavior and regulating various functions. No matter what activities we engage in, dopamine remains the primary currency that drives our experiences. Now, imagine someone who only engages in certain activities on weekends or a few times a week. If you look at dopamine from a chemical perspective, 
Considering its fluctuating levels between peaks and baselines, we can begin to understand why this person, after years of living with a work-hard, play-hard mentality, may start feeling burnt out and lacking the same energy they once had. While there are natural factors related to age that can contribute to decreased energy levels, oftentimes, the underlying cause is not solely due to cellular metabolism and aging. Instead, it arises from a gradual decrease in their baseline dopamine levels. This phenomenon can be subtle and its effects can go unnoticed, making it a rather sneaky aspect of dopamine's functioning. Essentially, individuals who constantly seek out activities that induce dopamine throughout the week, like intense thrill-seeking experiences or excessive substance consumption, gradually diminish their baseline dopamine levels over time. This decline can lead to a reduced sense of well-being, decreased motivation, and an overall feeling of emotional and physical exhaustion. The tricky part about dopamine is its ability to create a feedback loop. As individuals chase dopamine highs through various activities, their baseline dopamine levels continue to decrease, pushing them to seek even stronger stimuli to experience the same level of pleasure. This cycle perpetuates a constant craving for increasingly intense experiences, often at the expense of their overall well-being. Recognizing this process is crucial in understanding the importance of maintaining a healthy balance in dopamine regulation. Engaging in activities that naturally boost dopamine levels such as exercise, social interactions, and pursuing meaningful goals can help replenish and stabilize the baseline levels. By adopting a more balanced approach, individuals can avoid the harmful effects of dopamine depletion and foster sustainable well-being and vitality. The drop in dopamine levels can happen without us even realizing it at first. It is sneaky like that, but once it reaches a certain point where it is really low, we start feeling the effects. It becomes harder and harder to enjoy activities that used to make us happy. It is kinda like what happens with more serious addictions like drugs such as cocaine or amphetamine. They cause a big surge in dopamine levels, but then there is a crash afterward. In a recent interview, Andrew Huberman sheds light on the potential concerns surrounding pornography and its impact on the brain's learning and arousal mechanisms. He explains that while not all pornography is inherently harmful, there is data suggesting that habitual arousal from watching others engage in sexual activities may not translate well to real-life sexual encounters. Huberman goes on to discuss Mary Harrington's Three Laws of Porno Dynamics, specifically focusing on the law of fab entropy. This law suggests that over time, the intensity of consumed pornography tends to escalate, requiring increasingly stimulating content to maintain arousal. It is important to note that Huberman's perspective is rooted in biology rather than psychology or politics. He explains that powerful stimuli, such as extreme pornography, can establish a threshold for dopamine release. As the dopamine peak rises, the subsequent drop below the baseline becomes greater. This phenomenon can lead to diminishing returns, and excessive pursuit of dopamine peaks can be detrimental. Huberman suggests the need for control over these stimuli and emphasizes the importance of taking breaks to allow the brain system to reset. Furthermore, Huberman acknowledges the cyclical nature of dopamine and the existence of low dopamine states as a natural rhythm within the nervous system. He compares this rhythm to the basic form of motivation and pursuit required for eating. Additionally, he highlights the shared inherent desires among humans and other animals to protect their young and engage in reproduction. These desires provide insight into the underlying motivations behind pursuing sexual encounters. Now, it is super important to understand that doing things we enjoy is a vital part of life. It is good for us, but it is also important to understand how dopamine works and how it affects us in the long run. See, there is a balance between the highs and lows of dopamine levels, and they both influence each other. Suppose we get a good grasp on this relationship. In that case, we can make smart choices that sustain or even boost our baseline dopamine levels while still enjoying those awesome moments of motivation, desire, and craving. It is actually pretty amazing how dopamine has shaped us as a species. Those peaks and maintaining a healthy baseline of dopamine have driven our evolution and continue to play a huge role in our individual lives. So, dopamine is a really good thing. When we understand how dopamine works, 
we can make informed decisions about the activities and behaviors that can optimize our overall dopamine levels. And that is some powerful knowledge right there. It gives us the ability to find a balance between experiencing pleasure and having a solid foundation of motivation. By consciously working on maintaining or even enhancing our baseline dopamine levels, we can keep enjoying the positive effects dopamine brings, helping us grow as individuals and move forward in our lives. In our modern world, where instant gratification and constant stimulation are readily available, understanding the intricate workings of dopamine becomes even more crucial. With social media, video games, and other sources of instant pleasure at our fingertips, it is easy to get caught in a cycle of seeking short-term rewards without considering the long-term consequences. When we indulge excessively in activities that trigger a rapid release of dopamine, such as bridge-watching television shows or mindlessly scrolling through social media feeds, we may experience temporary spikes in pleasure. However, over time, these activities can lead to a desensitization of our dopamine receptors. As a result, we require more and more stimulation to achieve the same level of satisfaction, ultimately leading to a diminishing return on our dopamine-driven experiences. On the other hand, by understanding the delicate balance between dopamine levels, we can make informed choices to sustain or enhance our baseline levels of this neurotransmitter. Engaging in activities that promote healthy dopamine production and release, such as regular exercise, pursuing meaningful goals, engaging in creative endeavors, and cultivating strong social connections can help us maintain a stable and sustainable level of motivation and pleasure in our lives. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for more informative videos.